Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about finishing the setup of our room database. So if we take a look into our run class right here, then you can see all those primitive data types, integer, long and float. But we also have a bitmap in our constructor of a run. And databases in general are not made to save um, complex objects and a bitmap is such a complex object. So we somehow need to provide a way for room to save this bitmap and to get a bitmap again from how room saved it. And for that, what we need to do is to add a type converter to our database. So for a type converter, we need to define two functions, one function to provide a way for room to convert a bitmap into a format that room understands. And on the other hand, we need a function to convert the format that room understands to the format that we want to have. So the bitmap and that we will use in our app. And to implement that type converter, we will create a new class in our DB package. So new Kotlin class, select class here and call it converters. And inside of this class, we will now define those two functions. The first function will be a function from bitmap. So this function will take a bitmap as a parameter and will return a byte array because that is the format that I want to that I want to use to save in our room database. The bitmap will be saved as a byte array. And what this function from bitmap now does is it will take a bitmap. So when we create a run with a bitmap object, then it will take that bitmap and convert it to a byte array and that byte array will be saved in our room database. And maybe you don't really understand what that means to convert something from and to a byte array, because when I learned about that, I didn't really understand that too. So what we will do here is we will take our bitmap and convert that bitmap to its raw bytes, because on the lowest system level of a computer, everything is saved as zeros and ones, and eight of those zeros and ones make up a single byte. And that is, of course, a format that can very well be saved in a database. But just having those raw bytes doesn't tell us anything about the data that is actually saved in those bytes. And that's why we will also have that function to bitmap that will take those bytes and convert it to a bitmap because then we explicitly tell the computer that we want to convert or interpret those bytes as a bitmap object. So let's actually implement that function here. Um, first of all, we will have an output stream that is needed to convert that bitmap to its bytes. And we will set it to a byte array output stream that doesn't take any parameters in the constructor. And then we can call the function bitmap.compress. And that will take some parameters now. The format of that compression is bitmap. Um, compress format dot png. The quality we will set to 100. So full quality. And now we have to provide the stream into which these bytes should be saved. And that is exactly the stream we created above that output stream. And now after that line here, those bytes will be saved in this output stream. So we can return this output stream dot to byte array. And now we only need to provide another function to have a byte array and convert it to a bitmap. So that will be a function to bitmap that has a bytes array as a parameter, which is a byte array. And that will return a bitmap. So it will take that bit, uh, that bytes array and convert it to that bitmap that it returns. And that is just a single line of code. We want to return bitmap factory dot decode byte array. The first parameter will be the byte array that we want to decode here. So decoding just means to interpret those bytes as a bitmap. So we pass our bytes here. We won't have any offset. And the length of our array is, of course, bytes.size. And because both of our functions here are functions for room, because they should actually convert something. Right now, they don't do anything. Because of that, we need to annotate those functions with add type converter to actually tell room that those are type converter functions. And then room will automatically look up for functions that have that annotation. 
And if it has a bitmap object that it would normally not know how to save in a database, but it finds a type converter function that tells it how to convert it, then it will simply use that type converter function. And the last thing now we need to do to make our database work is to create the actual class for our database. So let's go to our DB package. That class won't actually have much code in it. And select class here. I will call it running database create that class and that will be an abstract class just as usual for room databases and it will inherit from room database. And inside of this class, the only thing we need to do is to have an abstract function that returns our run DAO object. So that will return a run DAO and the, the behavior of that function will be implemented by room so we don't really need to worry about that. But what we need to do for this class is we need to add some annotations for it. The first annotation is the add database annotation that just tells room that this is our database. That database annotation takes two parameters in the parentheses. The first are the entities of that table or of that database, not that table. Um, and we only have a single entity here, which is our run entity. So we, we pass run double colon class and we have to provide the version for our database, which I will just set to one here. And since we use type converters for our room database, we also somehow need to tell room that we want to use those type converters and where it can find those. So let's also add an annotation at type converters. Don't use type converter, instead use this one. And here we need to provide the class of our type converters in the parentheses, which is converters double colon class. And maybe you have seen my news app tutorial where I also used a room database. And in the news app tutorial, this running database class was much bigger than here. And the reason why this is so light, this, this class here, is that we use Dagger in this project. And that means we don't have to worry about the, the singleton functionality of our room database because Dagger will handle that for us. And in the news app, I didn't use Dagger. So we basically have to had to worry about that by ourselves, but Dagger makes this much easier and we have less boilerplate code. So that's it for this video. Please let me know below if you like this and if so, please leave a like, comment below and also subscribe to my channel. That would make me really happy to see you as my new subscriber. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.